Hi everyone and thanks for joining us today. My name is Jocelyn and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Double Radius. As always, the goal of our webinar is to showcase technology that will help you build better networks. Today we're excited to host Hycon Systems for a special presentation on power solutions for wireless and security. Joining us from Tycon to speak is Seth Allen. Seth has over 12 years of experience in the wireless and security industry and has been with Tycon Systems as their sales and marketing manager for the last six years. Before we get started, a couple quick housekeeping items. First, enter any questions you have into the questions box. It's better to type them during the presentation instead of waiting until the end so that we can queue them up and to be answered in our question and answer session. Second, after the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. Please take a minute to complete it as we'd really appreciate your feedback. And with that, let's get started and I'll hand it over to Seth now to get us started. All right, thanks so much. So welcome everybody. Uh, we hope to make this uh, an informative and exciting uh, little webinar talking about the different Tycon products. Uh, and we're grateful to uh, Double Radius for this opportunity. Uh, so we will begin. We uh, Tycon started in 2008, so um, about 12 years ago, going on our 13th year. Uh, we have three main brands, and so we're going to kind of overview the uh, the main brands that we offer. So first is our Tycon Solar. Now some of you may be uh, familiar with our parts, um, others may not. So I'm going to talk about the uh, the Remote Pro, which is our off grid. Uh, solar system. So this is powering devices completely off-grid uh, using our uh, our solar panels. Um, our remote pro system comes complete with uh, the enclosure, battery bank, obviously solar panel, controller, all the cables and mounting hardware. So really everything except the pole. Our UPS Pro is our battery backup system. So maybe you have AC power, uh, but maybe you have uh, some blackouts or brownouts or um, just need to have that dedicated backup power. And again, that in, the, the kit completes uh, is complete with your battery bank, battery charger, enclosure, uh, cables and mounting hardware. Um, and then our Breeze Pro is our wind turbine and uh, I'll dive into that a little bit. And then our TP10 web monitor um, is kind of a, a nice little tool, a nice feature to add to a, any remote site. So let's jump in. So, you know, we, we get to, the question all the time, you know, what kind of system do I have? And our goal is to help educate as much as possible. We know that when you're designing different systems or putting up uh, solar in different areas, there's no one size fits all. And so we design a system based on your specific application. And I'll show you how we uh, accomplish the uh, system design uh, in a little bit. Uh, but what we do is we design a system based on the total power draw of the devices along with the peak sunlight in your area. Um, obviously, you're going to have different sunlight based on your location. Um, and we, we've even seen, you know, in, in uh, different states, you might have some drastically different sunlight. And we always, when we, when we look at the peak sunlight, we always look at the lowest month of the year. So for North America, well, north of the equator, it's typically going to be uh, December or January is going to be the lowest month. And we design for those months in mind so that we know if it's powered in December, it'll power year round. So as you can see, we have different size systems from a 15 watt solar panel um, up to a 2100 watt solar array. And I don't have that picture and I apologize. I uh, couldn't get a, a good picture in time, uh, but we just released a, a six panel system with 2100 watts. Uh, what we note here are, it would be the continuous power draw or power uh, uh, consumption that can pull from these different size systems. This would be based on six hours of peak sunlight. Uh, we know most locations don't have that year round. Um, so we do help with the design, but this kind of gives us a base so that when you're comparing the different systems, we're comparing uh, apples to apples. So with our two and a half watt system, that's a 15 watt solar panel, and that would be great for powering maybe some LED lighting uh, part-time, right? So, uh, or maybe some irrigation pumps running for 30 minutes um, out of the, the day. So that's going to be a very small system, um, giving you about two and a half watts continuous power uh, when you have that much sunlight. Uh, next, we have our polycarbonate enclosure, which holds up to 36 amp hours of battery bank. And it's usually paired with our 35 watt solar panel. Um, again, used for uh, LED lighting, maybe a small access point, um, maybe some uh, uh, an ear, a larger pump uh, that's running part-time. 
Uh, from there, we have a uh, 85 watt solar panel, and that can be paired with uh, in an array of two panels or four panels, giving you 170 watts or 340 watts. And then you can have battery bank sizes from uh, two batteries that are about the size of your car battery, so they're 52 amp hours, and you can pair that uh, in groups and, and you wire that either in series or parallel, giving you uh, keeping you at 12 volts or giving you 24 or 48 volt output, depending on your specific application. And so you can put uh, two, four, or eight batteries together in our um, pole-mounted enclosure. Um, our largest of the steel enclosures can hold up to eight batteries, so about 400 amp hours, and it also has a 1U rack mount. Um, there's plenty of room for extra equipment inside, um, and our steel enclosures do come with uh, a thermostatically controlled fan to help keep the uh, the temperatures down. Um, all of our systems are tested and fully functional in all uh, ends of the, the world. We have these in the, uh, the strongest deserts as well as very cold climates. So um, with our equipment that's inside, it's, uh, it's obviously with our enclosures, there are NEMA 4 enclosures, uh, do a great job of protecting the equipment indoors. With our 100 watt and 200 watt arrays, we do provide a seven foot mast or pole with that. Reason being, uh, when you have such large solar panels, they become like giant sails. And our goal is to not have the wind take them from you. So we do provide that pole that you would want to uh, bolt into a concrete slab. Um, and that way it's uh, keeping it low to the ground and uh, keeping your, your panels protected. Uh, we do also have a, an aluminum ground mount enclosure, and that can hold up to 720 amp hours of battery bank. So again, when we design our systems, we want to make sure that you have enough solar array and battery bank to keep your equipment running, uh, whether your project is, you know, your requirement is 24 hours a day or 10 hours a day, um, or maybe just an hour a day. So we have different, several different models to choose from uh, with uh, not just solar array, but also with your voltage output. Um, from your solar controller. So we'll, we'll work with you on, on uh, the different uh, applications that you need. And like I said, our goal is to help educate um, so that you can go in you know, with confidence knowing that uh, you're gonna power your equipment continuously. So when we do a system design, this is what you'll look at. You can go to calculators.tyconsystems.com and um, our remote pro system power selection calculator. These are the details. So these are the variables that you're gonna put in. So when we look at the load in watts, we look at the data sheets from the manufacturers and that we go with their recommended. Uh, sometimes they'll put typical or they'll put max. So we kind of use that as the gauge of how much draw you're gonna have. Then you can select the hours of operation per day. Uh, most applications are 24 hours, you know, when you're doing uh, access points or security cameras. But, you know, obviously if you're just doing some lighting, that might be a 12 hour a day. Um, or some irrigation pumps, and you know, so you can do part-time. Then you'll look at average hours of peak sunlight. So um, I select, I'm from Atlanta, so I, I'm currently in Bluffdale, Utah, where uh, Tycon is headquartered, um, but uh, I'm from Atlanta, and so I, I decided to use Atlanta as the, uh, the, the lookup. So you can click lookup, put in the city, state, or the zip code, and then you'll look at the, uh, the each month of the year, it'll give you the average hours per day. So this is uh, Atlanta's December. Um, so you might think, oh, we have sunlight all the time, but you have to take into consideration the storms and cloudy weather and all that. So, uh, and then you can add extra hours of battery backup. This would be, hey, we need to have an extra 24 hours of autonomy or 48 hours. Realize that for extra autonomy, that means you're just running off batteries. So, you know, putting in four days or five days of just battery backup is not ideal because you're obviously, if you do go that many days without battery backup, then you are going to have that much solar array to try to recharge those batteries. So you want to find a balance um, and our design team can help you with that. Uh, some options, uh, I will talk about some options to help uh, give you some extra autonomy. Um, as well. But, you know, if you're really needing the four or five days, what would be ideal is to plan for two days. And then if you do go longer, maybe take up a generator um, to help recharge the batteries uh, just to help keep your cost down. But when you hit, uh, when you put in these figures, you hit calculate and then you're going to get all the information you need. So this one, you need at least 289 watts of solar array 
and 160 amp hour battery bank. And so then we re recommend two different systems. We have the RPL 12 slash 24 M dash 200 dash 340 and the RPSTL 12 slash 24 M. So what that tells you is the remote pro, so RP, and then the type of enclosure. So the L is our large aluminum enclosure. And we just released these uh, two new pole mounted aluminum enclosures. So this can hold up to four batteries. The RPSTL is our large steel enclosure and that'll hold four to eight batteries. So if you wanna have a bigger enclosure with a little bit more room, that would be a good one for you. The 12 slash 24 M, that notates our uh, 12, or sorry, yeah, 24 volt MPPT solar controller. Now you can select 12 or 24 volt output from that, but it is an MPPT. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then this has a 200 amp hour battery bank with a 340 watt solar array. And then just a reminder, these kits would come complete with all of the cabling and mounting hardware needed uh, for that installation. Um, we, a couple years ago, we, uh, you know, we, we go to major security trade shows and we saw that um, there was a great need for trailers. Not that there's a lack of trailers, but I guess I should say that there was a need for um, cost-effective trailers. And so we released our uh, Remote Pro Mobile Solar. And this is a 24 volt uh, with a 720 amp hour battery bank inside that aluminum enclosure with a 720 watt solar array. We do include the 18 foot mast and all of the cables is embedded in the pole. So, you know, somebody couldn't go up and just cut the cables and drop it. So it's a, uh, and we do include the pump inside that enclosure. So the mast raises in about uh, one minute and you can have all of your equipment mounted to the top. At the very top of that, you see that die cast enclosure. We do provide that along with our Versa switch. And I'll talk a little bit more about our Versa switch, but this will be able to help um, power all of your equipment at the top. Uh, if you have your own switch or you have a different scenario that this may not work, we can uh, work with our trailer guys and customize the trailer based on your specs. Um, you can add our Breeze Pro wind turbine to help add some autonomy. And we can also add a second enclosure if you want extra battery bank or just some extra storage capacity. Um, so, uh, you know, if you have more questions on that, we'd be happy to answer them there. You know, obviously there's a lot of different uh, scenarios with the trailer, but we're very happy with, uh, with our trailer and the progress that we've made with that. Um, now let's talk about solar controllers. So there's a couple different options. We have the PWM, which stands for power width modulation and the MPPT or maximum PowerPoint tracking. The, the main difference between those two controllers is the MPPTs do better with lower sunlight. Um, that, that's kind of the long and short, uh, the big explanation is they just do better with lower sunlight. They help charge the batteries a lot quicker because they can handle a higher voltage input. So when you put two panels together, you can wire them in series, um, like take uh, our 360 watt panels, they're 24 volt. So you can put two together, gives you a 48 volt, but really you're getting a lot higher voltage from the sunlight. And the MPPT controllers can handle that but you can still select 12 or 24 or 48 volt output. So we have several different models for our MPPTs. Uh, they do have an LCD screen. Um, and then, but if you have a smaller application and you don't need that, we do have just our, our standard PWM, which has a uh, 12 or 24 volt DC output. And then we do have some uh, solar controllers with PoE output. Um, we have our TP-SCPoE, so solar controller with PoE, and you can have a 24 or 48 volt PoE output. It is just one output, uh, one port output. If you do need something with a little bit more guts, we have our TP-DIN SC4820 uh, picture there. And that is a seven port PoE switch, which can be configured to 24 or 48 volt output um, from any of the seven ports, along with the MPPT controller at 20 amps. And then we also include our TP-DIN software built in so that you can remotely measure your voltage, current, temperature, data logging, all of that. And I'll talk about our TPDN uh, uh, software shortly. So our UPS Pro. So this is a very similar, same enclosure, same battery bank, different, somewhat different chargers. Um, and then this is just, you know, without the solar. So maybe you have AC power. So we do include the AC power cord uh, that would go into our battery charger. In most applications, we use our MPPT controller because it gives us more versatility, even though you're not using solar, but lets you select uh, which voltage output you need. 
So we have uh, from a nine amp hour battery bank to 36 amp hour battery bank to 50, 100, 200, 400, and then obviously 720 with our uh, aluminum ground mount. So a lot of different options when it comes to a battery backup. Again, um, when we're doing the calculations, we look, what is the total load that you have? And then how many hours of backup do you require? Do you require just two hours? Do you want eight uh, to give you time to get out to the site? Do you need 24 hours or 48? Um, so you get to select and then based on those requirements, uh, you hit the results and you can see what kind of system you would need to be able to keep your equipment running for that period of time. Um, all of our UPS systems are solar ready. So if you decide, you know, hey, I, I've got, I want an a, a UPS system, I've got AC power, but I want the battery backup, but I want to add autonomy, you can add solar panels and they're solar ready. So you can tie it in, give yourself more uh, runtime. Now, if you do, if you are in an area that has lower sunlight, but you have steady winds, you can add our Breeze Pro. This will work for any of our 12 or 24 volt battery banks. Um, so any of our 12 or 24 volt op, uh, applications, it'll tie directly into the battery bank because it has a built-in controller. And then it also has a built-in braking system. So it will prevent overspinning and it has, um, it'll dump the excess load once it recognizes that the batteries are full, it'll send the current through the tail so it doesn't overcharge your batteries. So this is a great supplement to the solar if you're in an area that has good wind speeds. Um, it has a very low startup speed, so at about four and a half miles an hour, it'll start charging, obviously very low current. But as wind picks up, usually 20 to 30 mile an hour winds is ideal. Um, you know, if you have steady winds with that, then that's usually a good um, start speed for uh, for being able to uh, help charge those batteries. Our TP DIN monitor is a great tool for any remote application. I know I've said that before, but I can't uh, stress that enough. This has um, four voltage meters, four current sensors, and two temperature sensors. So you can set up different scenarios as well as compound, compound logistics. So you can say, hey, let's set the voltage, and if it drops below uh, 12.2 volts, I want an email alert, and we'll shut off this relay. And so it has four relays, two normally open, two normally closed, and you can set and program the TP DIN however you need. Uh, with the compound logistics, you can uh, shut off those relays based, you know, based on the voltage, current, temperature, ping, or time. You can say, hey, I want to turn off, turn on and turn off this pump at this time, or turn on, turn off the light at this time. Or to save power, I really don't need my camera running at this time of day because people are there, um, you know, security is on, on uh, site. So, so you can do all of that remotely, and you can do it through, uh, it's available through web or SNMP. We do have a free Tycon Systems app that you can control all of your TPDN monitors from that. And then if you do have an issue at the site, we have our onboard data logger and history graph. So you can look at the history graph and see when you're getting uh, solar power, uh, when you have wind, when you have all of those things, and you can kind of evaluate what's going on at your site. So even if you don't have solar, but you have a remote area, this is a great tool to have. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, you know a little bit already about the TPN mon uh, sorry TPN monitor. Uh, but if you don't, then we're happy to to talk to you about that. We just released the Web three, and with that, that will tie uh, with one uh, RS four eighty five cable. You can tie it directly from the Web monitor to the MPPT controller, so you don't have to uh, individually wire each battery voltage and and, uh, and everything. So. It'll, it'll just connect uh, quickly with that one cable, which is a nice feature. So after, that's our Tycon Solar. Um, actually, we'll, we'll leave it here. Um, this is the time for, we're gonna have a first poll question. So if Jocelyn, you wanna put that, the poll question, we'll take about 10, 15 seconds um, and answer that to kind of get an idea of what you guys are working on. All right, so which scenarios would you most like to use solar or UPS backup systems for?
All right, so it looks like 29% said security cameras and surveillance, 52% said wireless access points, 10% said agriculture and irrigation, and then 10% said other. All right, very good. Well, and that's kind of what I figured, but with the, uh, the people that are probably attending right now, um, we do see uh, an increase in the security applications. And so even if you're you know, focusing mostly on wireless, ac wireless access points, doing setting up back halls in remote areas, you know, maybe having that security camera uh, on locale. So, and, and most, like, most of our uh, applications are doing a combination of, of all of those. So <clears throat> appreciate the feedback. So now we're gonna jump into to our uh, Tycon Wireless. Now we know that there are a lot of different uh, uh, applications or, or manufacturers out there for, for wireless. Um, we introduced our Easy Bridge uh, many years ago and it's been something that's uh, been very good for us. And it's mostly designed for end users or people that maybe don't have a lot of experience in networking. Um, with our Easy Bridge, we have a couple of different options. Um, We'll start with our, our LT, which is our light, and our HD. The main difference, radios are the same. The difference with the HD is that you have the industrial PoE injectors along with two of the 75-foot length Cat5 cable. Again, this is designed for people that are not maybe not as savvy or don't want to take the time to set up um, their network. So with the Easy Bridge, they come paired as you get an A side and a B side, and they are pre-configured. So out of the box, you just need to plug them into your POE injector, mount them, point them at each other, and they're communicating. Um, you can go in and set up different uh, uh, network uh, parameters and settings, but um, for the person that maybe doesn't have that experience, they're very simple to use. Um, we do offer in 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, and you'll get about 100 meg at up to three miles line of sight uh, for the easy bridge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have our Easy Bridge Ultra, a um, little bit different to uh, antenna design, so that uh, for the five gig you can go up to four miles and the 2.4 up to eight. Um, again, we include with these we include our uh, uh, Cat5 cable, and you'll get about 100 meg. So um, with the tighter beam width, that's how we're able to go a little bit further distance. And then we just recently released our dual AC, so we're excited about this. We were able to. Uh, uh, bump up the uh, throughput quite a bit. We saw just a, a need um, for uh, customers that are wanting to have several um, backhauls. So they can use this as their, their main pipe and then be able to um, branch off and share. You know, like I said, with the, with the uh, end users, this is great for people who are sharing internet maybe with a, a relative down the road or adding internet to their barn that's, you know, a couple hundred yards away from their home. Um, you know, as the, the need for uh, wireless access gets greater and greater, we, you know, we have uh, more and more popularity to our Easy Bridge line. So we do know that there are a lot of different uh, options out there. This is one option that, uh, that is available to you, and we do have a support team. So if you do have an issue, you can talk to a real person, jump on the phone with them, and then uh, they can help either reset or go through any configurations that you need. Okay, our last set, uh, our last grouping of uh, products that we offer is our Tycon Power. Um, I could spend hours talking about the different things that we offer. I will try to spare you and, uh, you know, kind of just hit get the highlights. But I want you to know that all of our products come from user experience. We attend many trade shows. I'm sure many of you have talked to, uh, seen us at shows um, or, you know, talked to some of our engineers like Scott Parsons, who's the uh, president of the company. And he will, um, and and he gets a lot of his ideas from from talking to our customers. And I and I apologize, Jocelyn, you're absolutely correct. I I failed. Now would be a great time for our poll number two. Um, as you're thinking about that, as the poll is popping up, um, you you can kind of get an idea of what Tycon offers. But know that we are customizing our products based on what our users require. So yep, let's uh, go ahead and put up poll number two. No worries. Um, what is the biggest challenge when it comes to powering your devices?
All right, it looks like 11% said managing correct voltages, 61% providing enough power, 22% said understanding different protocols, and 6% said nothing. All right, you guys are all smarter than me, I'm sure, when it comes to this stuff. So, um, so we'll jump in. Um, we've got a lot of different parts, and we are very skew heavy. Um, reason being because you know, with all of the different manufacturers out there with their power requirements, um, it kind of leaves a void um, when it comes to powering different devices. So this is kind of just a general, right? We we have a we're dealing with low volt. Uh, low voltage stuff, so 9 to 72 volts input. We offer 24, 48, 56 volt PoE output, and uh, most of our, our uh, DC converters are going to be up to 70 watts, and we do have some 100 watt uh, devices. We offer in passive and 802.3 AF, AT, and BT compliant. And, you know, and I, I it's interesting, I do a lot of uh, training and education on different power things, and I always try to gauge a measure of what knowledge they have. My guess is that you guys are all pretty smart and you know all of the different types of power things. If you don't, don't feel bad. Feel free to reach out. Um, I know that uh, Double Radius has a, uh, a great crew. Uh, their sales team is very knowledgeable when it comes to different power options. So that's something that you know I love to help uh, teach other people. I know that they do too. So. If that's something that you don't understand, if I say something, you're like, what are you talking about? Feel free to reach out. We're happy to help. Um, so we'll jump in and we'll start with our DC to DC PoE injectors. Now, this is great for when you have like maybe that 12 or 24 volt battery bank, but you need PoE output. So again, this is 9 to 72 volt input. Um, different, you know, the, the, the uh, 244856 PoE out. Um, with the compliance and passive, uh, we do all of ours are have built-in surge protection, and then we have the industrial strength, the industrial temperature. Um, so we'll jump into our DC DC product. So we try to make our parts as intuitive as possible. So DC to DC is just telling you we're change, we're going from DC power uh, to DC output um, at PoE. So one of our most popular parts is the DC DC 1224G. As you can see, that's going to be a 12 volt input. Really, we have a range of 9 to 36 volts. And then it uh, gives you 24 volt gigabit PoE out at 19 watts. So this will handle the majority of your, <clears throat> excuse me, Cambium, Ubiquity, um, Microtech, some of the, uh, uh, let's see, it's on the tip of my tongue, Mimosas. So anything that's, you know, 12 volt related. Uh, then we also have obviously our 48 volt that's going to handle just about any of the other. So any of your cameras, usually cameras run at 12 volt DC or 48 volt PoE, and it's usually compliant at, at least AF, if not AT. Um, a lot of your uh, high power access or yeah, access points, so your bridges would be in the 48 to 56 volt range. So we have a lot of different parts. I just highlighted the kind of top couple parts that people are using. Another one I could have put up with our, our DC DC 4848 because maybe you have a uh, positive ground at your, uh, uh, at your pole, at your um, tower site, but you need negative ground to power your equipment or vice versa. So all of our ports, they're, they're uh, isolated. So you can have the, uh, the negative ground or positive ground, whichever you need. I believe it's the negative ground that you would need for your equipment. Um, so our 4848 has become more and more popular uh, to, the, to our WISP customers. Um, we have a couple of different uh, PoE converter options. So this is a great one, the 4824G. Um, maybe, you know, most switches are going to be uh, standard, right? 802.3 AT output. But maybe you're powering a, a ubiquity access point or, um, you know, our easy bridges are 24 volt. And you don't want to have a big converter. So this is just a low cost down converter from 48 volt down to 24 to power those devices. Um, we also have our PoE 2456GD. So this is where you have 24 volts PoE input coming from a switch, but you need to bump it up to a 56 volt. Um, so that way you can you can kind of mix those um, voltages without having to add multiple switches. So a couple of our popular PoE converters um, to help uh, facilitate when you're doing your installations. 
Uh, we have the VHP or very high power. So we have a 10 to 60 volt input, 56 out. And this is a four pair gigabit at 70 watts. So this is going to power some of your, you know, some of the uh, the larger backhaul radios as well as your uh, PTZ cameras and such. So um, maybe you have a switch or you have a DC uh, power output and you're able to, to bump up that power um, for those different devices. And then we recently released our BT. So BT is the new protocol. It was released, I believe it was 2018 uh, that the BT protocol was uh, announced. And so it's, it's, the protocol will be up to 100 watts. We're still working up to that point. Not all are requiring that. So our 56 GDB, GD BT is up to 70 watts. So very similar specs to the VHP, um, but this is specific for the BT uh, devices. Now we're gonna jump into PoE injectors. So this is where we have our AC input. Um, and you just need to you know, power multiple devices, power different devices. So we have a lot of different options to choose from. Again, built in the search, built in search protection, um, passive 802.38 AFAT BT compliant. So here's a couple of our popular ones, just a PoE 24G, power your ubiquities, uh, easy bridges, cambiums. The 48G would be a 48 volt. We offer a, so our part numbers, like I said, intuitive PoE 48 volt. Um, G would be gigabit, or you might see a GD. D is the 802.3 AF or AT compliant. If it doesn't have a D, then it's uh, going to be a passive. So a couple different options um, when it comes to this. We also have like our uh, TP-POE-HP for a high power version of that. So if you're powering something that has a little bit more uh, power requirement. Um, we offer POE plus and POE plus plus. So this is where your, um, uh, you have the 802.3 AT standard um, and you need to have that to 60 watt power for um, some PTZ cameras. So it's a, a great low cost uh, device. We also have, uh, and it is 10 gig, um, as well as we have the 24 volt uh, at 10 gigabit. So if you're pushing more data through that, then uh, this will be able to accommodate. We also have many splitters. And so with the splitters, I mean, a lot of these are gonna be project specific. So we have many different options to choose from. Um, you know, just POE split, you're trying to split, you've got to POE input. And some of our splitters, you can split the power and the data. Some you can split power, so you have a DC barrel connector, but you can also have POE output on that uh, uh, RJ45 or ethernet output. So we have a lot of different options when it comes to that. So when I, I put the XX, because you have the different voltage outputs. So here we have 24 volt AC or 12 volt DC, 5 volt DC. So a lot of different options based on your specific project. Um, the PoE split 4824G-P, this is where you would put in the PoE, but it splits it, gives you that DC output, um, as well as it passes through that PoE. So you have the 802.3 AT. So if you just need to power a separate device, you can run one cable, plug in the, the PoE splitter, be able to continue to power that to device, but also have the DC output to power maybe a camera or something like that. Um, I know a lot of like the cradle points, some of the uh, cellulars just require like a 12 volt DC. So a lot of different options with that. Um, our PoE HP 48 GDX2. So that'll give you, uh, you'll have one input, um, oh, sorry, it's an AC input, and then you have a two volt or a 256 volt output. Uh, to power two devices. So that way you could kind of, you know, power maybe an access point and your uh, security camera or two access points. So um, you get 50 watts total or 25 watts per port. So it's just a nice way to kind of eliminate um, uh, a PoE injector if you can. Now we'll jump into our switches. We, we have uh, quite a few unique switches um, that I'd like to talk about. So I'll spend a little bit of time um, with uh, each one. We have our three port PoE switch, or we call it also a PoE extender. So you don't need an external power supply. You can run an 802.3 AT input and then get two ports out at 802.3 AT. So with that, up to 30 watts per port, you can, let's say that you have a, a longer cable run. So, you know, the, the, the longest you can run Cat5 cable is 100 meters. So you can run your 100 meters, plug into your input, 
and now have two ports that you can run another 100 meters and then power two devices from that. So it's just a handy tool, um, handy little switch that you can use um, for longer cable runs or you only want to run one cable length up to 100 meters and then you can just have two patch cables to plug into two different devices. So kind of a nice, uh, handy, unique switch, low cost switch there. We have a lot of five uh, port switches. I'm going to highlight the Versa uh, first. So this is a, this is what we include with our solar trailers. Uh, we call it the Versa switch. As you can see, you have five outputs. One port is uh, 24 volt passive, three ports at 802.3 AT, and then one is a high PoE up to 60 watts. So you can power multiple devices, different voltages from this one switch. It does require a 48 to 56 volt input, uh, a DC input. So you can run either like a voltage regulator into it or, you know, running from uh, a battery bank, a 48 volt battery bank. And then you're able to have those uh, five different ports to power maybe a couple security cameras, your access point, um, you know, a bunch of different stuff from that. So that's kind of a, a cool little switch that we have. The multi switch gives you uh, multiple voltage outputs. So you just need to supply it with different voltage. So you could have uh, on the green terminal block in the back. You can have a 24 volt input and it'll give you 24 volts on those ports that you select. And then you can also simultaneously run a 48 volt power supply to it and then have a 48 volt. So you get to select which uh, voltages you have from that um, output. The SW5G-24 is one of our most popular switches. It is a, a 10 to 36 volt input, but converts uh, four ports at 802.3 AT output. It does have one data input port. Uh, but then you're able to power all those uh, high power devices, all those cameras. So we do quite a bit with that. Our, our D and NC, um, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory, 46 in, 46 to 58 in, 802.3 AT out. Uh, the NC is our passive. So what you put, what you supply, what pet, whatever power you supply is what you're getting out from it. And then we just recently released our BT switch. So it is a high power input um, at BT, so up to 90 watts. And then it'll give you the 802.3 AT output, but that just gives you a higher um, output on each port. And then we have our industrial switches. So we have a four port and an eight port, eight port, fully manageable gigabit switches. Um, you do have two SFP ports as well. And uh, with these, you can supply it with uh, the 48, or I guess 40, 50, sorry, 46 to 58 volt input and then you'll have 802.3 AT output on all uh, all ports. Um, like I said, it is fully manageable and, uh, and it is an industrial switch. So you can use these in very harsh environments. Have a lot, we have a lot of accessories um, based on different types of products that you may be needing to add to your, uh, your different installations. So we offer different uh, search protection. We have the ESP1000 PoE which is up to 56 volts, and then the uh, PoE24. So if you are um, uh, wanting to do some surge protection from solar in the lower power, uh, we have the 24 volt, uh, which has like a, a voltage cutoff, I think at 27 volts. And that way you can protect your, uh, your equipment, very low cost uh, surge suppressor. And then we have a 24 port gigabit surge uh, suppressor. So if you do have a, a site, um, that uh, requires multiple inputs and outputs. Uh, you can protect all of your gear from the rack mounted uh, surge suppressor. We have a, another PoE extender that this is outdoor rated. Um, again, it's you can run 100 meters, plug this in, uh, run another 100 meters. It is 802.3 AT and you can daisy chain uh, a few of these together. So you can actually put three or four together to give yourself um, 500, you know, 400 to 500 meters of uh, cable run uh, from our PoE extender. So a uh, very handy tool to have because you don't need an external power supply. You can just, uh, and like I said, everything is waterproof there. We have a couple other PoE converters. Um, these are great. So, uh, you know, if you if you have a switch that, you know, may, maybe you're using a Cisco switch or a, a Microtik switch at 48 volts, but maybe it's old and you're not ready to uh, to upgrade yet. What we have is a couple different PoE converters. So the first one will take, let's say you have two ports at 802.3 AF, which is typically about 18 watts. Well, you can take two of those ports, plug it into the converter, and then you'll have one port output at 802.3 AT or up to 30 watts. 
or let's say you have a higher power switch and you have two uh, 802.3 AT ports, but you need a 60 watt, you can combine two of those. It has taken away a port, but now you're able to salvage that switch and get higher power um, as the manufacturers are releasing higher power products. So uh, just a very handy tool to have um, for uh, specific scenarios. And lastly, we have our voltage regulators. So these are gonna be similar to DC, but it's just a, a DC output. So wire terminal to wire terminal. So we have the low powers, the VRs, and you know I put XXXX uh, because we have multiple inputs and outputs. So you, know, you tell us what your input is, what you need as an output, and then we can provide the correct uh, voltage regulator for, for you. And then we have, also have our VRHP or high power version. Um, and this allows, it's an industrial strength, but this gives you the regulated voltage output. So it's, it's a great for those radios that maybe don't have a wide range um, of power inputs. So now you can regulate it and, and make sure that you have the, the correct voltage because there is a voltage range for the input. It doesn't have to be an exact 24 volt. Um, they're always gonna have like a, your 12 volt might be a nine to 36 or 24 volt might be an 18 to 42. So there's always going to be an input range to make it as versatile as possible and as, as helpful as possible for you. So that is the end. Obviously, we have a lot more products that uh, we, could, we offer. Um, but uh, like I said, we can talk all day and you'd get bored out of your mind. So we want to keep you interested. Uh, if you have any questions, um, obviously, here's the uh, you can uh, add it to the chat or um, reach out to Double Radius and, and get in touch with us so that we can help answer those questions for you. So it looks like we do have one question. Um, they asked, do you have anything similar to the Ubiquiti SunMax MPPT switch? So yes, our TPDIN SC4820. Um, I did have a picture of that. That's going to have that seven port PoE switch. Um, with as well as the MPPT controller. So that's a 20 amp controller. I believe the SunMax is only seven amps. So this is a 20 amp. And then it also has the monitor firmware built into it. Um, we are working on a, I believe a four port version um, that'll be available with a 24 volt input, but that's gonna be down the road. Uh, but our TPDIN SC48-20 is gonna be our most versatile um, uh, MPPT controller. And, and I just want, I'm gonna brag for a second if, if you don't mind, but I was at a trade show, uh, one of the WISP ones, and, and one of the one of our competitors came up to us and said, I really wish we offered this. So kind of was a proud moment for me knowing that uh, a major competitor that specializes in this as well uh, was a little bit jealous of, uh, of what we offer with that TPDIN because it really is a phenomenal uh, piece of equipment for uh, solar uh, applications. All right, and the next question, it says, I may have missed it, but can your charge controllers manage a gel battery? Uh, probably gel battery. So yeah, so the MPPTs can be used with um, just about any type of battery. PWMs cannot be used with uh, the lithium batteries, but our MPPTs can be used with gel, AGM, lead acid, lithium batteries. So they're very versatile with those with any type of battery. We personally do not offer lithium batteries. Um, we know that they have a longer uh, lifespan. They are much lighter, but they are, from what we've seen, about triple the cost of a standard battery, and they're a logistical nightmare to ship. And so, just uh, you know, the regulations because nobody wants to ship them. If you have a, a scenario where you want to use your lithium batteries and get it from a local source. That's not a problem. We can customize our kits uh, to be a, a no battery system so that you can still have all of the features of the remote pro, but then you can purchase your batteries locally. Uh, that's not an issue for us. All right, um, we still have a little bit more time to answer some questions. So feel free to enter them into the questions box if you have any other questions. Um, while we're giving a minute for questions to be entered, let me just share briefly about additional resources that we have available which are all accessible on the footer of our website, www.doubleradius.com. You can subscribe to our newsletter, follow us on social, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we often post um, webinars that you might have missed. 
And you can also subscribe to our blog. Um, whatever you have to, whichever way you prefer to stay informed, there's a lot of different options, but if you wanna just choose one, um, we definitely recommend subscribing to our newsletter because we pack a whole bunch of stuff into that. Um, and it looks like we got one more question. They said, we use the TPDIN Web 2. What is the difference in it and the Web 3? Um, that's a great question. So our Web 3, um, it, it's going to have all the same features as the Web 2. We've increased the memory storage on that. But the greatest feature or improvement is being able to connect with our MPPT controllers. And so, you know, if you've used the Web 2, then you've had to uh, you know, wire um, everything to that. So whether you're doing, you know, four volts meters, you're connecting the wires from each controller or each switch or everything like that. What you can do is with our, we have a TP'd in cable that'll connect directly. Just, uh, it's kind of just, it has a, it's a RS-485 interface and that'll plug directly in the TP'd in, plug directly in the MPPT. And that way you don't have to hardwire that in. Um, with all the different connectors, it's just that one cable. So that's gonna be the biggest change with our Web3. But then we did increase the memory, um, the data log storage, all of that as well. Awesome, thanks Seth. And with that last question, it looks like we have a wrap. Um, we'd like to thank Tycon Systems for explaining today how their power solutions can help keep networks running reliably. And we hope you're planning to take advantage of the right solutions for your deployments. As we close out, please remember to quick or complete our quick survey that will pop up on your screen, and we'd really like your feedback. Thanks again for joining us today. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.